Facebook, what's up? How are you guys? Hi, hi, hi. How is everyone today? I am coming to you live from my new home. We moved last week, a week ago today, uh, which is why I did not come to you guys live last week because we were in the process of moving. And we bought a home in Weston, Connecticut, and I am so excited to be in this home. And I have this incredible view that I get to look out at over the lush greenery. Um, yeah, and you can see some of my new office hangings behind me. So anyway, hello, hello, hello. It is so nice to be with you guys. And for those of you who are constantly getting new fans, new followers every single day, so thank you, thank you, thank you for letting me be a part of your life and a part of your health journey and whatever capacity. I, I appreciate it so much. And to all of my consistent um, and really committed community. I really appreciate you guys so much, so thank you so much. And um, another thing to remind you guys is, and I wanna get better at this too, so I'm gonna bring it to the forefront right now, is answer, you know, post comments and questions while I'm talking, and I, I gladly engage you guys, you know, and I wanna hear how you deal. Today we're gonna talk about dealing with everyday traumas, and I wanna hear how you're dealing with your everyday trauma. So I really want to start accessing my community too, right? You know, I feel like I'm giving, giving, giving to you guys, which I love and it's great, but I'd love to have this be more of an open conversation too, which social media doesn't always allow for. So just remember that. And yeah, so let's get to it. Let's see. Oh, some comments. Uh, Fatima, Kat, Katie, thank you. Elizabeth, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Congratulating me on my new house. Yeah, it's exciting. It's really exciting. But also, what, what I was on my team call yesterday, and we had a different topic chosen for today's Facebook Live, and we changed it uh, last minute, kind of on the fly, because of you know, I said like how amazing it is to move and how amazing it is to be, you know, how how appreciative I am of the, um, my contact is dry, of the opportunity to be able to buy a home. I know for that, right? And, um, and you know, how, how just, you know, between my husband and I, and just like amazing, we're, we're very fortunate. And, and I know that. Um, however, the the stress and the trauma that goes with moving, you know, this is actually our fourth home <laughs> since James has been born. In all honesty, it's actually our fifth because he was born. We took him out to the Hamptons. We were renting a house out there. I did my maternity leave out there. So we were out there all of September and October. July, August, September, October, we were in the Hamptons or maybe something like that. And then we moved back to our apartment in Brooklyn that we were renting and we proceeded to stay there for a year and a half. And then we moved up to Westport, Connecticut and rented there for a year and a half. And then they sold that house. And so we had to move. It was very last minute. It was very stressful. And we moved to another home that we thought we were going to buy. And then the house kind of turned out to be just a shit show. <laughs> no joke. So then we were in a shit show for a year and that was pretty miserable. And then now we moved into this house. So it's been a lot. And through that, my husband has gone through, I think, two jobs and he's currently unemployed um, and figuring out his next steps. And, you know, we also had a child and all that mix. And there has been a lot of things. And I've been growing my business and reaching you guys. I wrote this book during that time, right? This book came out right before I met my husband. Then I got pregnant. Then all those other things happened. Then I wrote this book somewhere in the mix. Um, I, I built up this community somewhere in the mix. I created a whole online business somewhere in the mix. And as amazing as all of that is, I see you guys chiming in here on Facebook. Says, Hi, everyone. Um, Hi, Sally. I'm so glad you're here. And you guys are so sweet with your congratulations. But as, like, you know, all, from the outside, that looks so. Um, so incredible and maybe even like luxurious to some people or um, lucky, right? Lucky, I think is a good word and that can create jealousy for others. And then I think social media is a great space for that, right? You see people in like Bali and you're like, I'm such a loser. I don't go to Bali, you know, whatever. Or Amy's bought a house. 
I'm such a loser. I don't own my house. You know, whatever it is that like we we take other people's um, posts and, and images and their life happenings and take it personally because we're like, where's my stuff? You know, why am I not? And and as much as I have all these amazing things going on, I have been in this space of like, yeah, it's not enough. Where's my stuff? Um, not not selfishly, but also I don't need to defend that. Um, it's just how I've been feeling because I think, um, you know, I guess maybe I expected myself to be at a different place in my life um, at this age. And even my husband has expected that of himself. So, so we have some of these things that we're working through. And to understand that, you know, I think the word trauma is used um, very often these days. And I, and I think rightly so. And I, I'm not a psychotherapist or a psychiatrist by any means and, and will never claim to be one. But I have been in clinical practice for 15 years and I've been a waitress. I was a waitress for 11 years before that, which I think gives you a pretty decent understanding of, of the human um, nature and of how everyday life stressors can be significantly traumatic to us and and how to manage them, how to deal with them, and really how to have grace with yourself while you're going through them. Because you might not even notice, like I just said, I had my um, my helper here before for Amy Rout Beauty Orders and you know, she, had, she was at the previous house and now she came to this house and um, I said to her, she said, everything just seems so, like, everybody seems so settled right now because she saw James and she saw my husband. And I said, I don't think we realized how stressful it's been for us because we were in this space that we really didn't like for the last year. And and with, you know, honestly, we were renting from these people that were just kind of jerks to us. So they, they you know, I, I feel bad saying that. They they got frustrated with us because they thought their house was perfect and beautiful and, and I think got disappointed that we didn't think that and had different expectations. And so, it, you know, I don't think they're jerks. They just got sick of us complaining, I suppose. But, you know, I think the house should be heated, right? Um, you know, basic things like that. But so being in this space now, I am starting to realize, oh my gosh, I was carrying these things and these worries and this kind of uncertainty. And so I've never, I've never lived in a home that was like a permanent residence since I grew up, the home I grew up in, right? So I've basically been renting my whole adult life. So, you know, not realizing the impact that that has and, and the, the trauma that that can take on somebody and then that, the sense of belonging somewhere and then how that impacts you. And so even, you know, what my husband's been going through, just his career has shifted and his own identity with that is shifting. And so where do we give ourselves the space and the grace for healing from that? And even for me to witness him going through that and that I can't do anything to improve his his joy factor, right? That's on him. And so for me to have to separate that out and um, and that's hard for me because I'm a fixer, right? So so all of these things and, and what life brings up for us and, and how to really sit back and witness and witness our role and what we can do and what we can't do. And so I wanted to come to you guys and, and just share about that. Do you guys relate? Do you guys get a sense of um, like similar things going on in your day to day life, you know, where there, there's there's changes that happen and we might just say like, oh, it's okay, it's fine. And it's like, no, you, you're you allowed to witness that. No, this is a lot. There's a lot going on. There's lots of shifts. And yes, there's a lot to appreciate in my life. There's so much gratitude, so much joy, so much love, so much, you know, um, abundance. There really, truly is. And I never lose sight of that. But I also can get to this place where sometimes I'm like, okay, but I still want what I want. And I've still been working towards these goals and I would like to achieve them sooner than later. I would I would like my husband to achieve his goals sooner than later. Like I, you know, there's this place where you can get frustrated and, and impatient with those things too. And and I think how we deal with that frustration and that impatience really does impact how we manage through the, the trauma, if you will. And so, you know, I think we think of things like trauma as and they, these things are of course traumatic, but that they're you know, major circumstances that happen to us, being in war or getting a significant illness, right? These types of things. But there are these traumas that happen to us all day long, well, not all day long, maybe, you know, within our daily life that deserve witnessing and honoring. You know, I think about a lot of the girls I deal with that have been going through fertility challenges and they're like, oh, you know, 
it's fine, whatever. Like my one girl the other day was like, you know, she had her like third miscarriage. Um, uh, she just started working with me. Um, the doctor had to do a DNC and he, you know, didn't do his job properly and left some tissue in there. And she got this incredible heavy bleeding at a barbecue on Memorial Day. And, and she's telling me the story. And I was like trying to hold space for her. And she's like, that's fine. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's not fine. Like, don't downplay this. This is significant. I'm not trying to add drama to it, but I'm also just trying to give her the space to say, like, no, you need a good cry about this. You need a good vent. Like, I'm a safe person to vent to. This is a safe space. Just get it out. And then we can move on with our life. I don't want us to be holding on to it and carrying all these emotions or anger or fear or worry or sorrow with it. I want us to let it come up and out, right? Up and out. And so you know, that's the kind of stuff I try to do with myself where it's like, okay, yeah, it's been an intense couple years. And to sit with that, you know, I was like a little short tempered the other morning. And I said to my husband, you know, um, I, I was able to identify, like I took some space for myself. I went and took a nice long shower, had some breathing time. And I was able to come out and say, you know, I feel this way because of X. And, and I also noticed though, that your mood is dictating my mood. And that's my fault because I'm letting you dictate my mood. And that's, you know, classic codependency. And I am very aware that I have a codependency nature and I don't want to label myself or negatively talk about myself, but, um, cause I love myself, but just send me like, this is the role I'm playing, I'm calling myself out, you know? And so I, what I did in that moment, um, okay. I was like that. I had four miscarriages in DNCs in four years. I'm just now crying a lot this year, more than before doing IVF this month. Oh, Chris, I send you lots of love, but, but that's it too, right? It's like, I see that a lot in, you know, any health challenge or anything in life. Like even for me with what we've gone through of just like four homes in less than four years, that's significant. And two different jobs or three different jobs really for him. And, and in that same time frame, um, we have to keep going on with our life, right? Like life isn't going to stop. So we're just like, Oh, well, I got to get up and go to work tomorrow and I got to do this thing. And I have these other things I have to take care of. And so you're not giving yourself the space or the grace to really heal. And so where is that stuff going? And is it getting, you know, compartmentalized in a negative, unhealthy way? And then, you know, in Chinese medicine, we see that if you're not dealing with the emotions, if you're stuffing them down, they are going to wreak some serious freaking havoc on you. So you better be processing processing or at least like the way you said Chris uh, Krista I'm gonna call you um, that this like just give myself the space to to witness that yeah I went through a lot during that time and it might be three years later right it might be as that part has ended like that's what's kind of hit me like we got in this house and all of a sudden I was like oh my god like this kind of anger was coming up and uh, discomfort just I was disgruntled and I'm also tired and we moved and we packed a house and I have a three and a half year old and, you know, thinking about him and school and like all, I want to keep all his stuff as similar as possible because I don't want this to be traumatic for him. I want this to be exciting and, you know, but also like I'm holding space for all these other people that, you know, for me to just slow down and witness, like, this is a lot. This has been a lot. And, and yeah, we're tough. We're resilient. We're getting through it. We'll be fine. And, and these are first world problems. I'm very aware of that. But also don't downplay the situation just because your problems aren't as big as somebody else's. It's all relative. Your, your life and your things impact you too. So just give yourself the space and the grace for that, right? Honor yourself. Does that resonate with you guys? Let's see. Laura, Elizabeth, Laura, this resonates so deeply. Oh, thank you. Yep. Push it down or try to convince yourself it's okay. Up and out. Totally agree with you. I find myself in that struggle. How do I push on but also give myself space for the time to heal? Aw, Steve Testament. I love you, buddy. Um, one of my good, good high school friends. Uh, um. Laura Fletcher, how do I push on but also give myself the space and time to heal? I mean, I think you just do. You just also in that moment say, okay, I still am going to go on with my life and do my thing, right? But in that, in that same space of like just 
just staying reconnected, right? I know you're a big body belief girl, right? So read my book, Body Belief, and the word, this guy. I talk about the reconnection and how that's key. So staying connected enough to know, like what I did the other morning, like I was being a little bit of a bitch to my husband, clear. I'm short tempered of being a bitch. Uh, you know, just is what it is. And I wasn't due for my period. It was just any old day, and I was just pissed off. And so I caught myself. I went, I checked myself. Okay, I'm in a grumpy, cranky mood. Why? What's bothering me? Didn't take long, few minutes. It didn't take long at all. A nice long, like a five minute shower. I'm not a long shower, like that's a long shower for me. A five minute shower, I was able to unpack it. So giving myself the space and the grace, and that's it. And just then just witnessing it, saying it out loud to yourself, looking in the mirror, writing it in a journal, saying to a person that you feel safe with, just calling yourself out like, hey, you know what, I'm carrying this. And it has been a lot for everybody. And so, you know, I, I just have a lot on my mind and I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself and I want to keep everybody happy. And that's, that's it. That's all it is. And then you will feel such a relief, such a release, and you're then able to go on, right? And move on and, and continue on with your day and with your, your space. Um, keep up the amazing work. Love and miss you. I love uh, would love to see you at some point. Um, feel the same. Went back to work day after my miscarriages and didn't allow myself the grieving time that I needed. Right. And Sharon and I, you know, Sharon's was a coaching client of mine or is, and, um, worked through so much of that, all that pent up grief and emotion. And just this thing of like, I don't know, we downplay it. Like we're not, we're not worthy enough of dealing with it. Right. We're life's too busy. I don't have the time. And also though, it's an avoidance thing. I don't want to deal with it. I want to actually box that up, push it away and kind of, worry. it's too big, it's too big for me. It's too overwhelming. I had a friend last night I was supposed to meet and I, and she was like, are we still on for tonight? And I was like, to be honest, I'm feeling extremely overwhelmed. I, I, you know, James has got this weird eye thing going on. I, you know, uh, the house I'm packing, my mom's here. I'm, I'm giving myself a break. Whereas the past Amy would have wanted to please everybody and still would have met up with that person and I would have re resented having to go. And instead I just spoke my truth. And she's a good enough friend that she's gonna understand that. The good friends that don't understand, the friends that don't understand that, goodbye, don't need it. Um, you know, they're not, that's not grace. They're not giving you grace. And just if you can honor yourself and be in touch enough with your feelings to state how you feel and if someone can't meet you there, not for you. But just slowing down enough to be like a miscarriage, more than one miscarriage, is a lot of shit to deal with. So give ourselves the space and the grace. We've been trying to get pregnant for two years. My husband recognized my job was making me sick, and he gave me the space to take some time off and heal my mind and body. Well, Danielle, isn't that the best thing on the planet? Congratulations, and give your husband a big kiss from me. Um, I think that's beautiful, and what, what a loving, kind thing. Not going to lie, not working for the last month has made me have somewhat of an identity crisis, but it's interesting learning how I defined myself by a job that made me miserable. That's what I'm dealing with with my, I think he's home, so. Um, starting IUI next week. Okay, Danielle, keep us posted. I send you so much love, but that's it. Giving yourself the space and the grace, and then in there, like, yeah, you're beating yourself up so much for these things, like these expectations that you think you should be living up to for you. What in the hell is that? Be easy on yourself. Cut yourself some slack. I mean, that's what I've been trying to do this week, too, of like, okay, yeah, because it's been a lot, Aim. Aim, you're carrying a lot. And you're putting a lot of pressure and I'm focused. I could be a little focused on the lack and a little focused on, you know, what isn't going right and I'm trying to shift that too, right? Because there's so much good. There's so much. I'm looking behind me. There's so much good in my life. Um, I left Aspen, Colorado to move in with my parents in the Midwest to deal with healing from an condition and who knows what else. As nice as it seems to be able to take off from work, focus on healing every day is a bit hard, a bit isolating. And I've left 18 years of life in Colorado going through stress and trauma to heal stress and trauma. You know, Trista, I send you so much love and I totally agree, but it's like also in that, like trust the timing, trust the space and the grace, right? And that you're you're with these people who brought you into the world, who love you and would do anything for you, right? And you're giving yourself that time to heal. And that does feel isolating, but maybe that's what you need too. So just like trusting as well, trusting the timing of our lives, trusting the unfolding of our lives, which can feel really challenging.
Um, girl, we are so similar. Heart you. Aw. Oh, you and Sharon, you guys are so sweet. Steph, I love your inspiration. Thank you. I call myself out to my husband and apologize for my negative mood. We are preparing for our first IUI tomorrow, and I'm feeling a little stressed. Thank you, husband. For my ghee, I just got a ghee delivery from my husband because I have to make 100 lip balms for the well and deliver them tomorrow. I'm very excited. But I was at a ghee. Um, okay. Sometimes I push my feelings back to just keep going in the present. And that is okay. So there's this thing about, like, being present. What does that mean? I do think that means being conscious. I don't think that means ignoring how we feel. I think we need to be conscious and aware and say, in this moment, yeah. So right now I'm going to choose, you know, I got a little emotional just before, if you saw. And so what I chose to do was, I don't want to let those tears out right now. I'm just not feeling it. Um, but I'm aware of them, you know, and sometimes that they're just on the surface because back brain is from my dad that he wrote right before he died. And, you know, and I love it. And I read it regularly and see, it'll make me cry because I miss him still, even though I know he's with me and I'm very spiritual. It's still sad for me sometimes. Um, so in that though, right? So I'm trying to stay in the present with you guys and, and move through that, but I'm not going to repress that. I'm going to honor that too. Like even if it's just this, that little note right there, I just said to you guys, you know, that, that just came up for me and I just want to honor that, but it doesn't need to rule my life. It doesn't need to keep me in bed for the rest of the day, right? It's just, let's honor this. This is how I'm feeling. But I also do need to get through my day. So I'm going to, maybe I'll deal with it later. So maybe I'll write an email to myself or a text message to myself or I'll take three minutes to just sit and breathe with that feeling. Accept it, acknowledge it. When you sit with the belief or when you sit with the feeling, the negative emotion, it hands you the belief. And the belief for me is, oh, you know, I don't have my dad to talk to and he would be the one I would go to with this stuff. And that makes me feel sad. And, and that belief just isn't true. It's so funny. I hold on to it all these years and it's not true. Um, I have different beliefs and I know that, but I still hold on to the old ones and then they trigger the sadness, right? So to get in touch with that, take those few minutes, few breaths and get in touch. Um, so excited for you sending loads of baby dust. Oh, replying to Julie, right? Steph, giving yourself the love and kindness and forgiveness. That's right. Sometimes we have to have unreal expectation, unrealistic expectations of what we should do, what we think we should be able to handle the Wonder Woman syndrome. Absolutely. And I have that. Oh my God, do I have that? Like, well, I can fix that. I'm going to do that. And now instead I'm like, I'm just the guide. That's all I am. And I'm working on me too. The more I show up for me, the better I'm going to be for my people. And that's the most important thing for me, to be honest. And you guys are part of my people, right? That's what I mean. It's like, but I got to do the work too and then bring that to you guys. And I are authentic, vulnerable, and honest. I am in my work. The better you get from it, right? You get, the more you get from it, the, the more understanding. Because then we're relatable. And then you start to see, like, we're the same. None of us are different. Everyday traumas are significant, so just give yourself the space and the grace. Look at yourself in the mirror and say something kind, like, hey, you're doing a good job. I'm proud of you. You know, you've been through a lot. It might not seem like a lot to other people. People might look at my life with envy, but, like, my life has been my life, and there have been challenges that I still carry, and, and I give myself a lot of love you know, around that and, and a lot of understanding and compassion. And that's what I want for you guys. Uh, ghee delivery. I know he's the best. I sent him a picture. Um, original ghee, hundred percent grass fed. I know. So ghee is in my lip balm, which is the bomb diggity. If you guys haven't used my Amy Rock beauty lip balm, I think I'm the only lip balm on the planet that uses ghee and it is so fucking good. It, like your lips are like the best ever. Um, I've struggled with my mental health since I've had my son three years ago. I do worry about what daily traumas I'm holding in and how they might be affecting me. So Christy, you know, I send you love too. And it's like, sit with them, journal about it. Like, you know what the traumas are, you know? So just give yourself the space to feel them, let them come up. You don't have to unpack them all right away. That might be way too much, but just start to sit with them and identify and be like, oh, you know, and it's probably like looped in a belief system too of some sort. And and what, what if they say is like our brain just creates the wiring, right? So we just keep going down the same path. And so instead, the next time something comes up that feels like, 
like it's going to trigger you in a sense. It's like, I could, like Gabby Bernstein always says this, choose again. I can choose again. Listen to the Eckhart Tolle, um, Oprah Winfrey series that they did on his book, The New Earth, on her super soul conversations on her podcast. It's like a seven part series. It is so good, Christy. I feel like that would be so helpful to you. Um, so maybe try that, you know, and just because what, what Eckhart talks about um, so much is like the acceptance and the acknowledgement. And it's not really sitting with the negative feelings for too long. And my spiritual teachers talk about the same thing. It's not don't sit with it for too long, but sit with it long enough to acknowledge and witness it. And when you acknowledge and witness it, you do actually give it space to come up and out. And that is the key, because the more we stifle, the worse it is for us. So I have to go live on Dow Labs page now at 1230. So I got to leave you guys, but I'm really enjoying this conversation. And I love how engaged you guys are on Instagram and on Facebook. Everybody sharing so much means so much to me. And I appreciate the space you're holding for me right now. It could make me cry. Um, I needed this talk too. So thank you so much. And I'll be here next week. Oh, and I have a gift for you guys. Oh, my God. I forgot about that part. My body belief meditation. If you go to amyralph.com slash, is it body belief meditation? Body belief meditation. amyralph.com slash body belief meditation. Head over there. Get a free meditation that I created for you that will help you. So, Christy, that's something good that will help you too. Um, Sally, I think um, that's a really nice one. Um, Steph, you guys know it, Elizabeth, all you guys on here, get get access to that meditation. It's great. It's like 15 minutes. It's made by me for you with lots of love and to give you the space and the grace to really honor yourself. You deserve that, okay? All right, guys, I love you. I'll see you next week. And um, yeah, have a great day. Bye, bye. Oh, and if you want, head over to the Dow Labs, D-A-O Labs, their Instagram. I'm gonna talk more of the same over there, Chinese medicine and what that means, okay? Ciao.